We're gonna be making a dining table, my own dining table. I don't know how many tables I've made and I've never made a table for herself. My wife is very excited. So we're finally gonna do this. We've got some walnut, about to start breaking it down for the base. It's gonna have a cherry top, should be pretty cool. Probably saw the thumbnail. Anyway, I've got two walnut boards here to be the base. This one has a little bit of a bow. Actually, it's a fairly severe bow. So what I'm gonna do before I mill it is go ahead and cut it into those pieces. Because if I have a bow like this, then I cut into smaller pieces. That's a much smaller bow to deal with in each piece so we won't have to remove near as much material to get things flat. So yeah, we'll just uh, montage through, getting all this broke down into the rough pieces, let it sit, and then start doing some joinery. Finish up the milling today, everything's dimensioned. I checked it, it didn't move. Fortunately, everything I started with is pretty flat, so I'm not worried about having to do a additional milling on this, but now it is time to start cutting everything to length and doing the joinery. Pretty elegant base design, so nothing too crazy. Um, one thing is I am working on with this, though, is grain continuity. So whenever I cut my big boards into those sections, I marked you know F1, F1, F2, F2 for feet, legs, to keep those boards together so that way I can keep these as pairs. So when I cut these to length, what I wanna make sure I do is not cut this here, cut this here, have two the same length, but now my grain doesn't line up the same. So I'll flush cut one end together and then basically I'm gonna process these as the pairs so that way the grain keeps matching. So about to do that and then start working on the joinery, fortunately with the new saw stop, I have the sliding table because I'm gonna be doing a lot of angles. So I'll use a taper jig and then um, that dude to get all the joinery. It's basically bridle joints or saddle joints. Not really sure which, call it a honeymoon joint. Okay, got all the tapers cut. Use the Rockler taper jig, that white sled thing you saw to cut the long tapers and then just cut the toe angle using the sliding cross cut sled. Now it's time to start doing the joinery. Here's my long middle piece and two feet. So basically next is gonna cut a notch here and then cut a matching notch here. So these will shook right together. And I've kind of rotated it sideways. Of course, we'll have you know more spacing, blah, 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 not to scale. And then my two legs are gonna sandwich here and here going up. And these extra two pieces will be the pieces on the top. It's basically what we got going on. Some of you are probably wondering, why'd you cut all your tapers and angles before you did your joinery? Isn't that gonna make it harder? It's actually gonna make a lot of it easier, especially the angles that go on here because they're gonna be perpendicular to this taper. So this is actually, I'm gonna be square to this taper, so that's good. <laughs> One joint that it made it harder is, you know, this half lap kind of joint, saddle joint, bridle joint, whatever, in the feet. I should have done these before I did all those. Fortunately, it's only a problem for doing it at the table slaw with miter gauge sled and all that. Um, if you do them by hand, it really doesn't matter. So uh, did one just to make sure I've got my chops. Now it's time to do the other. So this is also a great example that if you don't have 
you know, a $6,000 crazy sliding table saw. You can get away with just a $20 saw and, you know, like a $4,000 chisel set and do the same thing. So what you just saw was my test cuts, which fortunately came out right. I'm establishing the uh, cutty outy party here on the legs. That's gonna go over the foot like so. The way we're doing this is um, I want it perfectly centered. So I didn't move the jig, did one cut, flipped the board, did the other cut to make sure this stayed centered. I'm gonna run my other three legs through the exact same way, and then we'll hog out all of the middle, but they're all gonna get cut with the same setup, so they're all the same. To the careful observers, you'll notice that this is smaller than that. Um, the reason for that, the other part of this joint is gonna be shaving down the, uh, the shoulders here, and the reason for that is it will hide any slop and error. Um, it's far easier to explain just when I actually put the joints together, why, but yeah, um, this is smaller, and also because these cheeks would be way too thin, I wouldn't trust them. But yep, that's what we're doing. So we'll do the outside cuts on the rest, then I got the middles and blah, 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 blah. Got the joints all cleaned up and off camera. I also went and notched the top just the tiniest bit to let it recess. And the whole idea here is that then when this, when these two mate together, any error I have in having those joints perfectly tight is gonna be hidden inside here by the shoulders. So that, yeah, just a way of, and also gives me a little bit more meat because as you can see here you know they are that much thicker than they would be if it just met on the outside so it gives me a little bit more strength we're going to do i'm going to do the same thing at the top but it's slightly more complicated because of this angle so what i did is took one of the off cuts from when i cut these tapers gives me a flat surface line these up and see i kind of have this crazy prop situation going on and then copied this angle with the bevel gauge, like so. Now I have that angle. I can take my angle on my fancy bevel gauge and use it to adjust my tenoning gauge. It has this backrest, and now my backrest is set at the same angle. So I kind of mocked up my leg to get my angle and also distance from the end. I, I set them up so you know everything's pretty flat and then just used this square over and over and over to make sure my edges are in line and also that things are parallel. Another way it could have been use a piece of plywood and just kind of jig it up. Um, but I did this way. I'm not using my model because these aren't exactly the same dimensions as my model. There's just a little bit of error that happened through the process so that would translate into more error. So once I start making physical pieces, I always pull my measurements from the real pieces. So time to do what I did down here to these. So 
So all this joinery is finished. I got it sanded to 180 with a Merca using Abernet. And now I'm about to pre-finish this with General Finishes Armor Seal. I'll do the same on the other components. And then once it's all together, spray conversion varnish. So yeah. One of the reasons I pre-finished these now before I did the two top pieces that are gonna hold the two top pieces together to make a nice square is this is so tight, I'm not confident in my ability to get it all apart once I put it together. I only wanna assemble it once. Um, and I thought I had to assemble it before I, to get the right dimensions to do these. But I realized the distance between the two top pieces is exactly the same as the distance between the two bottom pieces. And I can't put those three together and measure and do it. So I should have done these first. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that now and then this all come together at once. Then there will be a little bit of uh, finessing, um, you know, cutting all these to the right angle. I want to do that in place, then spraying finish, and then onto the top and attach the two. Base is all done, so now I can start working on the cherry top. Gonna use a technique I've been using lately I really like, which is to line up my pieces and then screw a cleat underneath it to hold everything together and then tracks all that at once, which makes a perfect glue joint. Then I can mark up my dominoes while everything's together, then do the glue up, some epoxy, some finish work, or sanding, and then all the finish work, and this thing will be ready to come together.
So of course that wasn't the only project for the dining room makeover. There were three projects, the coffee bar, dining table, and the chairs. So if you enjoyed this project, make sure you check out the other ones. If they're not out, they will be out so shortly. I'm gonna release them all three weeks in a row. Yeah, this is it. I hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least entertained. Until next time, make time to make something. It's perfect. Here, so these will shook right together. That shook into place is a very scientific term. It's gonna shook right in there.